and welcome to Lions Club Structure, a Lions University course brought to you by the USA Canada Lions Leadership Forum. My name is Past District Governor Wendy Kane, and I would like to remind you that this webinar is being recorded for those who cannot participate with us live, and it will also be available if you'd like to review the material at a later time. There are a few ways you can participate in today's webinar. We will have a poll question for you to respond to coming up here in a few moments. And you can also ask questions or respond to questions we pose by using the questions pane or raising your hand to be called on. And in that case, we will unmute you and you'll have the opportunity to share with us and with the group verbally. Lions Club Structure is course number 102, a required course for the Lions University Bachelor's Program that's designed to help Lions lead at the club level. The Bachelor's Program involves the completion of 10 required courses, shown in the left column, and at least 5 elective courses from the right column. You can see a current status of all courses that are currently available or scheduled by going to the appropriate program summary page. The bachelor's program is shown here on the slide and of course next to it on the right would be the link to the master's program and then subsequently the doctorate program as we, we advance the content for the doctorate program. You will need to register an account on lionsuniversity.org in order to access the available courses, take quizzes, and track your real-time progress in completing the courses. This requires a different username and password than those who have registered at members.lionsforum.org. Uh, however, you could choose to use the same username and password if you wish. After participating in a webinar or watching a course video, select the Mark as Completed button at the bottom of the, of the course page, and then a link to the quiz module will appear. We have had some folks that have needed to refresh their browser in order to see the quiz, the link to the quiz module, um, or you can also select the next unit button that will appear. You can monitor your own course completions by selecting My Account and then selecting the subpage that shows the Bachelor's Program, Master's Program, and in the future Doctorate Program. When you have completed a phase of the program, such as all required courses or at least five elective courses or the required experience, then you can select Apply for Program Credit and the unit associated with the appropriate phase that you would like to apply for. Uh, complete the relevant information in just a, a text box form and that will be verified by our leadership team and then updated on your profile at the members.lionsforum.org. You can check this by logging into the forum members area or if you do not yet have an account you can um, select activate membership and then select either the option for Lions University student, which is a free option, or if you register to attend the USA Canada Lions Leadership Forum and the, the fee that's associated with it, that, then you will automatically be signed up as a Lions University student um, for the purposes of the Lions Forum members area. From your profile, profile page, You'll be able to see the courses that you may have completed prior to March 1st, 2015. Those are still maintained in this profile, uh, as well as the summary of key requirements for each of the programs, which are highlighted by the, the red brackets. Now, normally, this is the part of the webinar where I introduce you to our faculty member for a particular topic. But today, I am your faculty member. I really appreciate the volunteer time and preparation and experiences our faculty have brought to Lyons University so far. And now that we have several bachelor's program courses in our library, I wanted to take a turn in the hot seat and experience what we were asking of our faculty members. 
So hopefully I can use this experience to help make the faculty responsibilities a little easier while we continue to provide quality information to the Lions of North America. I do want to take a moment to acknowledge past International Director Bud Wall, who will be helping me out behind the scenes in responding to questions in the question pane and unmuting folks who want to participate uh, with us live um, in response to questions or to ask a question. So some of you may have got, we did something a little bit different this, uh, this afternoon, and some of you may have gotten the, the comic relief of, of hearing us chat in preparation for this webinar. Uh, we also have uh, Pastor National Director Terry Graham with us behind the scenes as he's preparing for the future rollout of the doctorate program. But let's dive in. The structure of Alliance Club includes a variety of topics that we're going to address during this course. We're going to look at the required and optional aspects of Lions Club officers, club meeting frequencies and formats, and club committees. We're also going to talk about utilizing club branches and Lions Clubs or branches that are focused around special interest areas. And I'm excited that we're going to talk about a new pilot program that LCI is implementing in this regard. There is a handout available on the course page for your use, and if you haven't downloaded that, I posted a direct link in the chat box for all of the audience. So I would encourage you to, to grab that handout and follow along. Several of the Lions Club structure points that are presented in this course come from the standard club constitution and bylaws. And you can find this on the LCI website as publication LA2. And we've also included a link in our supplementary resources section for this course. This standard form is recommended for adoption by individual Lions Clubs as their official local club constitution and bylaws. If your club does not maintain another version of the Constitution and bylaws, then this is really your club's default. However, some clubs use th this standard form as a starting point and then make revisions or modifications based on their unique or particular club needs. In either case, it's important to keep up with any approved changes that may, may come from the LCI convention each year, and you can see this version was updated or revised following the 2014 International Convention in early July. And unfortunately, Lions Clubs International is pretty quick to revise those documents after um, changes have been voted and approved by the delegates at the convention. The officers of a Lions Club shall be a president, the immediate past president, the vice presidents, secretary, treasurer, membership chair, and all other elected directors. It's important to note that the Lion Tamer and Tail Twister are optional club officers. And so in some cases, those may be appointed if they're not elected as club officers, and they may or may not be a part of your club's board of directors. Clubs also have flexibility in how many directors they utilize and their terms of office. The structure that I've seen most often is for a club to have two one-year directors and two two-year directors, although some larger clubs have had a larger number of representatives of the general membership that are not officers but direct board of directors members. So since we're in the midst of officer nominations and elections for the next Lions year, I'm wondering if your club elects any other positions. So if your club ballot includes other positions, please either raise your hand to be unmuted or type your response in the questions pane to be shared, because I'd be interested here again in maybe some variety that we see in our Lions clubs. Lion Bud, do you want to help me out there, or I think we can... Yeah, I'm looking here, Wendy. Um, 
Lion Chris says membership chair. Lion Don Rice says they have a bulletin editor and a third vice president and a PR chair. Um, Lion Roque, is it? Uh, says they have an assistant treasurer. Uh, Lion AJ says they use four directors that each serve two-year terms but offset the years so two go off as two new ones come on. And he also says they have a public affairs director. Lion Jim says uh, they have a director of publici uh, publicity. Let's see. Um, Lion Terrence says they have a house chair on the board. And Lion Suzanne says we have an assistant secretary. Uh, Lion Roque also says they have an auditor that they include. And Lion Gary says they have a, an assistant tail twister. So that's that's pretty nice. It must be a pretty active club there. They have two tail twisters. Yeah, so, so the assistant positions are a great opportunity um, to to elect additional officers, provide support for the secretary or treasurer or tail twister. Um, I don't know. I think my, my club gets has our hands full with one tail twister, so I'm not <laughs> sure about a, an assistant to go along with them. But... Um, the, the membership chair, a couple of folks have mentioned membership chair, and that is one that's noted in the the Constitution and, and directly by right. LCI. Uh, but it looks like there's there's quite a few clubs that, that have a, a public relations or publicity type of, of uh, position that's a part of the board. And, yeah, and, and, and a lot of them um, appear to have assistant whatever, assistant secretary, assistant tail twister, um, so, and that, that could be in the form of trying to learn the responsibilities of the particular positions so that they can take on that, uh, that role in the future. So, you know, um, it's a good learning experience for, for those folks, definitely. Yep, it's a great opportunity for some continuity and getting others involved in some of those positions. So, yes, yeah, certainly I would encourage that as, as someone, uh, I think, our club secretaries have this issue more than treasurers, um, but I know with Lion Gary on board with us, and, and he spent a lot of time as a club treasurer, and, and I've uh, I've recently found my way off our board of directors as the treasurer to give someone else that opportunity. But a few of those positions that may be difficult to um, to share the load, having an assistant uh, certainly helps. Kind of, I think, take away some of the mystique or. Um, the uncertainty of taking on a challenge like that. Uh, let's right. see. And, and Lion, Lion Jim makes a good point here. He says even though they have a co-tail twister, um, there's only one vote. So the main tail twister has the vote on the board. So and that, that's, a, that's a, a, good a good point to make. If you do have a, a, a co-secretary or a co-treasurer or a co-whatever, uh, they both don't get votes on them. Board of Directors, it's, it's the main position uh, that does get the vote. Yep. Uh, let's see, Lion, I think it was Lion Terrence who mentioned having a House Chair on the board, and I, I suspect that has to do with a, a key or a major project that their club conducts, and you may find that if, if your club has a, like a signature project um, that that chairman is a member of the board. Um, there's a, a local club near me that operates a community pool and so they have a separate board for the pool but the representative like the president of the pool board I don't know what they call it um, is also a member of that club's board of directors and so I have seen that on occasion with with some other clubs uh, yeah, and, or if the, exactly and, and if a club uh, happens to have a clubhouse they may have you know the, the there, there may be a separate board uh, that runs the clubhouse, but maybe the chairman of the, the board that runs the clubhouse may then also be a, an automatic member of uh, the board of directors for the Lions Club, too, as well. Right, and, and Lion, Lion AJ described it better than I did with the the board of director structure that I'm most familiar with, and that mm -hmm. there 
are usually four directors that each have two-year terms that, um, so in any given year, two members are on the first year of that term and two members are on the second year of that term. Uh, I think I've seen some right. much larger clubs that have had either three or four members for each term, uh, but a total of four directors with two-year staggering terms has been the most common that I've seen. Um, I'd like to ask, Lion Dawn shared bulletin editor and third VP of PR. Lion Dawn, can you verify that the bulletin editor is someone that is elected or um, as a club officer or if they're just a member of the board of directors? Um, if you can just note that in the, the questions pane there. Um, Lion Dawn says uh, one of one of our directors is specific as a liaison to our major fundraiser bottles and cans cans um, which they do monthly and raise 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 money monthly. Uh, then Dawn says elected. She so answers elected. Yeah. Okay, so I do, I do like having the bulletin editor, editor on the board of directors. That's a great idea, whether elected or appointed, uh, because that gives them a ready excuse to go to those meetings and make sure that the rest of the membership is aware of what's going on. Uh, Lions Clubs International does not designate how many vice presidents a club should have. Uh, depending on the size of your club, recommend at least one. Most clubs have at least two vice presidents, and Landon sh shared that um, that her club has a third VP. A lot of clubs, it seems like they mirror LCI's structure, which had three vice presidents at one time. We currently have two, but um, a third vice president is is being proposed and will be voted on to come back on as an executive officer at the, the next international convention. So a lot of clubs kind of mirror that process or that structure, although LCI does not dictate how many vice presidents a club should have. They, they also don't describe what the specific roles of the vice presidents are. And so there are a variety of, of ways that club presidents you know, individually choose to utilize their vice presidents or clubs may have certain customs. Um, I've seen many clubs that separate out their committees and assign a committee to at least one of the vice presidents to kind of monitor and for the committees to report directly to the vice presidents. Other clubs use the vice presidents as a uh, just a, a training ground to to step in up and step in or step up into the president role. Um, some have had random committee assignments. Others have said, you know, the first vice president's responsible for all service projects. The second vice president's all uh, fundraising projects, and the third vice president is, you know, club administration, like the publicity or uh, finances, audit, um, and things like that. So there really isn't a kind of a standard on that. That's very much what works best for your club, and I would encourage you to to kind of poke around and see what other clubs in your area, how they utilize their vice presidents and see if, if there are some lessons learned or things that, that might be working well that you would want to adopt. Yeah, what, <clears throat> Wendy, uh, Don actually says here that uh, her, their third vice president doesn't actually move up in the chairs. It's a stationary position and it's specific to public relations. So. It sounds to me like the, the third vice president, in her club anyway, um, is basically in charge of, of PR and remains there, doesn't automatically move up to second or yeah. first. That's interesting. Yeah. Very very cool. So something things work differently for clubs, and that's a that's an interesting prospect. That might even be similar. Line AJ, I, I noted, just said that uh, the first vice president is responsible for programs the second vice president for projects, and the third for the newsletter. So um, similarly, although they may not be stationary. But it does give the vice presidents an opportunity to experience and touch many, if not all, of the committees and activities of a club before they reach the presidential position, assuming that they, they move up methodically. So. Thank you all for, for sharing, particularly some of the, the unique additional elected club officers that you shared. 
Now I'd like to, to run a quick poll. And as we move on to this next topic, I'd like your input on how often your Lions Club meets. And so let me get the poll up here. And those are the, the four options that you're going to have. We have 80% of you who have voted. Take another moment and, and try to get a... quick response. Well, I'll give you three more seconds. All right, let's take a look at the results. So just right at half of our clubs meet two times a month. We have 12% uh, of that meet weekly. And Lion Lee and I noticed, and Lion Lynn both shared, one meets every Friday and the other just noted that they, they meet weekly. A um, little over, almost a third meet once a month, and 8% has other. And so as we go back to the, uh, the PowerPoint screen, I'd like to ask the folks, the first question has to do with the folks that responded other. I'd be interested in what your configuration is. And so if you wouldn't mind if you responded other to share either in the questions pane or raise your hand and describe how often your club meets. We'd like to, to see a little bit more about what, the op what, what our options are for our clubs. Well, so far we have, um, let's see, two times a month. Once, once is a board meeting. Once is a general dinner. Uh, Line John says that um, he has he's his own chair and he has clubs who meet anywhere from once a week to once a year. I'd like to hear a little bit more about once a year. How how they even um, exist? Meeting only once a year. Line John, if you like to include a little bit more information on that, I'd be, I'd be more than happy to, to uh, receive some of that information. And then uh, Lion Jim says they have a dinner, a board, and the business, so three times, three times a month, I would assume. But uh, it's, that's okay. real interesting on once, once a year. Okay, so then the, the three times a month is, is probably standard, although it appears Lion Jim shared uh, that one is, is more a dinner meeting and the other is a business meeting, and then the third being the board meeting. But uh, Lion John Barsanti, if, if your microphone works, um, would like to uh, you raise your hand and we'll know that. I'd like to hear a little bit more about what you know of the club that meets once a year. Uh, he's on. Let's see if we can get him on here. Uh, all right, Lion John, you're unmuted. You, uh, Thank you. All right, please. They have eight members. They meet formally once a year. Um, they do four major fundraisers, Texas Hold'em tournaments a year, and they get 100% attendance. So they discuss things then. But formally, they meet once a year. And that's only so the district governor can make his meeting. But they, they're, they're in existence and they, they have the, the projects that, that they, they do? They have their projects, they raise their money, they, they're actually a very good club. They have 100% attendance at everything they do. do. Do they participate in like any of the district functions? They, they, come, they come to every region meeting, uh, they tend to come to our district conventions. Uh, yes, they do. Uh, they're, I work all their events, so they, they come as kind of a, a thank you. Okay. Neat idea. So that's, a, that's a, a great option. Thanks for sharing that, John, for a little more detail. Thanks, John. Uh, Lion AJ shared that uh, he has a, there's a branch club uh, that meets once a quarter 
and they work with the, the their parent club and assist with their projects, but the branch meets once a quarter. Um, and then Lion Keith shared, I'm taking over your job, sorry about that, that line, but it's, it's habit. Um, <laughs> he shared that they have one club that meets monthly in the winter and twice during the summer. And I, I think uh, there are quite a few clubs that kind of modify their schedule with the uh, um, kind of with the weather or um, with the, the the tendencies of their club members depending on on some of those other situations so it's some that I think are associated that may be associated in and around schools and things so okay thank you for for some of those options and uh, again part of this is to get us thinking about just other ways our club might meet and just know that there are possibilities that are out there. Um, I've noticed a growing trend for clubs in my area to have different times of day for their for different meetings. So they might meet twice a month, but one might be for breakfast and then the second would be for lunch or maybe they would do a breakfast and a dinner meeting or a lunch and a dinner meeting. And so they're trying to, to reach you know, a wider range of, of members or potential members' schedules and availability. Um, and so that might be something to, to think about to, or to experiment with. So uh, let's see. Um, Regular meetings of the club shall be held at times and places that are recommended by your board of directors and approved by the club. So that's one thing you'll need to consider if you're looking at altering your meeting schedule. All meetings shall begin and end promptly at the set in regular times, and this is a, a good practice that we learned about in the Effective Club Meetings course. And it's LCI recommends that Lions Clubs meet at least twice a month. Again, that is just a recommendation that is not a requirement um, as is written in the standard bylaws. It does reference just at the recommendation to meet twice a month. Uh, but there are certainly um, lots of good reasons to meet in different frequencies, some of which we heard about a few moments ago. Regular meetings of the Board of Directors shall be held at times and places that the Board determines. And LCI recommends that Board of Directors meet at least once a month. We have noticed a, a couple of different structures or formats for the Board of Directors meetings. And we saw a little bit of that in the responses that some folks had had, had a moment ago. Some clubs, many of the clubs will have a separate Board of Directors meeting. For example, my club meets on the second and fourth Monday of each month. And so our board of directors meets on the first Monday. So it's at the same time, um, a different place and different day of the month, but uh, same day of the week to keep us in that routine. There are also many clubs that conduct short board of directors meetings either before or after regularly scheduled Lions Club meetings. And what I really like about that option is that our Board of Directors meetings should be open to any Lions Club member. When there's business that comes before the Board of Directors, only members of the Board are allowed to vote, but all of our Lions members should have the opportunity to be heard as, as uh, different items are being deliberated. And so it's, it's kind of nice when you've already got a built-in, you know, meeting, assuming you don't have business that's going to take a long time or, or cause the, the day or the time to drag on, it does afford more of our Lions members an opportunity to, to participate in board meetings. And this is something that I learned as I was researching this, but the, the bylaws actually reference an annual meeting of the club that shall, notice the word shall, be held in conjunction with the close of each Lions year at a time and place that's determined by the Board of Directors. And it, it references that this at this meeting, final reports should be given of the retiring officers, and then newly elected officers shall be installed. 
and generally my experience not just in my own club but nearby clubs is that you know we do the officer installations for the new years but it hasn't been as obvious or we haven't really done the kind of final officer report to close out their term and so again that's something that, that I learned and, and will be taking back and sharing with my board of directors um, as we plan for that change in, in our officers coming up in at the end of June. So there are a number of options for the meeting format and I think the one most of us are familiar with are the standard in-person meetings but the standard form bylaws also references some other alternative meeting formats that could be initiated by the club president or any three uh, board of directors members or in some instances if a club is just getting started or a branch then this might be something that is endorsed and approved at the beginning of, of that club or branch operations. A couple of the, the formats that are referenced in the bylaws are teleconferences and web conferences and they also highlight um, specifically business transacted by mail um, that would include email, faxing, cable, um, written letters and if if a club is going to conduct business in that manner then two-thirds of the club membership needs to approve that alternative. So I'm curious and we'll open up again here for additional comments or responses. Um, I mentioned a few of the highlights or highlighted a few of the alternative meeting formats but would be interested to know if you are either familiar with or your club utilizes any other type of meeting format besides the in-person and maybe a teleconference or web conference for conducting your meetings. So if you have, have any other alternatives that we should be aware of to consider, uh, please either raise your hand to speak or type that in the questions pane. Wendy, a little earlier we had a question about um, cyber meetings, cyber club meetings or e-club uh, meetings. Uh, do you we, have any information you want to share about that particular? We are going to talk a little bit more about that format, kind of as a special interest, uh, but that certainly is, is one structure where um, it kind of goes to the, the web conference or maybe the combination of a teleconference and web conference that most of the, the business can be conducted now through um, votes and discussions online. Um, when you look at some of the features even that uh, Facebook has, nowadays you can have a, a private Facebook group for your Lions Club and conduct business that way or at least share information in between meetings or allow I guess, or facilitate having fewer in-person business meetings. Okay. So I will highlight that a little bit more when we talk about some of the specialty areas, but um, that's one format that that I'm intrigued with and am, am researching to, to try to incorporate some opportunities for the general Knoxville, Tennessee area where I am. Um, so certainly that, that's one, and, and I know there's quite a few folks that have some experience with that. Yeah, Lion, uh, Leanne mentions uh, something along this line. She says, our club does not do this. However, I would like to see the use of Skype when you are unable to hold meetings due to bad weather, et cetera. Uh, this keeps the one-on-one one -on -one visual view. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a good point, too, as well, the, the Skype. And then Lion Suzanne adds on, we have only had board cyber type meetings if we have business that needs to be acted on immediately and there's not a meeting scheduled in time. So they, they it sounds to me like clubs do um, make use of a computer and internet service, whether it's Skype or, or whatever means, uh, to conduct some type of business that needs to be taken care of uh, in between times of regular regular club meetings. Right. Thank you, guys. I, uh, I have to tell you, I'm, I've got mixed feelings about the whole cyber club or cyber meeting aspect. Uh, I love the potential for technology and the, the convenience and time saving and things like that, but I just love being with lions. And so, um, you know, the idea that, that 
we conduct a whole lot of things without having the one-on-one -on -one interface or live interface um, is something that I personally would miss. Um, we have there. I'm aware that there are several, and this may be. A, uh, it looks like Lion Donnie just shared something similar, um, but there have been some clubs that have used either Skype or uh, FaceTime and called in or or connected with members that were either um, ill or were not able to to be accessible and couldn't get out for a club meeting. So while they still might have a a live in-person meeting, they've used that technology to help tie in some of their members that aren't able to attend regularly for, for a variety of reasons. And so that may be a kind of a good segue or a way to, to start introducing the technology options to your club while also helping meet a need for some of the members who otherwise wouldn't be able to, to be there and be a part of what was going on. Let's move on to, to club committees. There, there are several standing committees that may be appointed by the club president, um, except I would highlight the membership chairperson who that in that position is elected by the membership as a club officer. And we're going to look at uh, club committees here in a moment or some, some specific ideas and suggestions for club committees. Um, I just want to highlight a few points about committees first. From time to time, the president may also appoint, with either approval or endorsement from the board of directors, special committees that may be necessary to, to carry out a particular function that, that may not be an ongoing need, but uh, maybe you've just lost your meeting location and you want to establish a committee to look at new alternative meeting locations or something along those lines. So maybe a short duration or very um, unique or specific topic. It, it is important to note, and this was highlighted in the, the President's course, that the President is an ex officio member of all committees that the club has established. And all committees shall, I use the word shall because that was in the bylaws, uh, for the, the standard form for our, our Lions Clubs, but all committees shall consist of a chairperson and as many members the president considers necessary. And the reason I wanted to highlight that is because if your club is like mine and some of the ones that are around me, we tend to have some committees of one. And so I would encourage you, whether you're the club president or, or a vice president that's moving forward, to really look at that and make sure that, that um, you, know, you, you have an appropriate number of people that you can appoint to committees and that that will help our clubs be more successful in carrying out the activities that we're meant to be here and doing. So um, please be wary of committees of one and, and um, only be in that situation when absolutely necessary because um, it helps to even just have a second person that you can bounce ideas off of, share the load, and things like that. So Lions Clubs International has a whole slug of standing committees that are listed in the standard form bylaws. And they are on the, the, uh, the screen in front of you there. A lot of these correspond to the administrative divisions of Lions Clubs International and some of the approved service areas that LCI has resources and information available to help Lions Clubs serve in these areas. Um, my club doesn't have many of these committees. We, we do have committees for individual fundraising projects and, and individual service projects which would fit in some of these categories. Um, but I kind of like the idea of having a you know, environmental services committee that looks at more than one project or activity throughout the year that would fit in that bucket. And another chance to either raise your hands or type in the questions pane. This covers a lot of ground here, uh, but I'm sure there are some committees that your club has that are not in this list. And so um, recognizing, if, if we can, let's recognize there are a lot of different fundraisers out there. And so if please don't share fundraising project committees. 
um, but any administrative committees that your club might have or um, activity committees that maybe don't fit in one of the buckets from the LCI resources. Well, Lion, Lion Jim would be happy to see that uh, Lion AJ says they have a Lion's Alert Committee. And um, there's a Christmas Parade Committee Lion Donnie has, Lion Leanne has grant seeking and leader dogs, um, a student speaker contest, which is done annually. Lion Roque has, has that listed. Um, so those, those are good committees. I don't see any others right offhand. Um, here's, here comes a few more. Nominations. Um, Lion Rose Float Decoration Committee. Lion Roque has that. Lion Mike has. We have a, an Autism Awareness Committee. That's one we don't see very often, but very, very appropriate. Uh, Lion Mike, you also have your hand raised, so I'm going to, to see if there's something else that you'd like to share. There we go, Lion Mike. Uh, if I'm on, I guess you can hear me. We sure yes. can. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm sorry. I, I raised my hand, and I, I guess I shouldn't have. This is the second webinar that I've been part of. But, uh, yeah, we, uh, we've actually taken our autism awareness uh, to the district. And uh, it's, it's, it's one of the things that we'll be focusing on this next year as, uh, as I'm governor. All right, thank you. Yeah. We have a, a few more interesting uh, committees coming through on the, the, the list, and then we'll, we'll move on. We have services to the deaf from Lion AJ, uh, the Memorial Committee. That's nice to have it at the club level. I'm familiar we've, we've had that. Many of our districts do something similar to that. Oops, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself <laughs> on the screen. So uh, Sunshine Committee. That's a, a great administrative committee to, to help let our members know that we care about them. Um, that may or may not be part of the membership committee function. It's kind of nice if it's not uh, because they have some very specific things that they're, they're responsible for. So thank you guys for sharing some of your additional um, committees in the questions pane or live. Let's see, Lion Gary shared a meals committee and Lion's Den. So again, those are some, some recurring needs that, um, that our clubs have for both either or either administrative or activities. So if you don't know what committees your club has, please ask your president or secretary for a list of committees. Um, one, that's just good to have to know kind of the breadth of, of everything your club is involved with, but you might also see something on there that you, you weren't familiar with and you'd be interested in getting more involved with as we go. So let's move on to, to club branches and that is part of Alliance Club structure. So clubs may form branches to, to help permit the expansion of lionism into locations when maybe the circumstances don't support the formation of a, a full charter club which takes 20 members. Um, it may also be that there's a, a sub, subset of an existing Lions Club that wants to focus on a, a particular topic or maybe like I mentioned earlier, they, they can no longer meet at a certain time and they want to meet at a, a more convenient time but still be associated and affiliated with the parent club. So the branch meets as a subsidiary of the parent club and can conduct service activities in the community either independently or in cooperation with the parent club. The members of the branch are granted membership and are part of the membership of the parent club. Let's see, oh, next page. Those, so those are the kind of the key points out of the Constitution. That's higher level. More practical aspects of the club branches um, that's captured in the bylaws is that the, the branch members elect a president, secretary, and treasurer. Um, so you need at least three members. I think they, the target for the kind of the minimum number for a branch that's ideal is five members. Uh, but So those three individuals along with the branch liaison constitute the executive committee of the branch. So branch clubs use the, the terminology executive committee to differentiate from the the parent club's board of directors. 
the members of the branch are the ones that, that have the opportunity to um, elect the president of their branch. And that branch um, president serves on the parent club's board of directors and is also encouraged to attend either general meetings or board of directors meetings of that parent club and provide records and reports of, of planned activities and finances of the branch and also to help coordinate efforts and communication between the branch club and the parent club. But really all members of the branch are encouraged to attend the scheduled meetings of the parent club when and if they are able to. From a, a, a voting standpoint, members of the branch are obviously able to vote on activities of the branch club, but they are also voting members of activities that the parent club takes on when they're in attendance at the parent club meetings. So if they aren't in attendance, then they don't get a vote, but if they're able to attend the parent club meetings, then they're able to weigh in and be a part of, of that decision-making process. So one of the, the things that seems to be picking up more steam both um, from a new Lions Club focus but also a branch of existing clubs are special interest Lions Clubs or special interest possibilities. We talked a little bit about the Cyber Lions Clubs that conduct most of their most if not all of their business online and um, then would primarily get together for either social activities, service projects and the like. Um, I consider Campus Lions Clubs as a, as a special interest Lions Club. Um, the, the Campus Clubs connect students, faculty, staff, and even local business leaders that um, come together on a, a local community um, college or university campus. And I, what I really like about Campus Clubs is, is how different it is from the uh, Oh, gosh, oh, other student organizations on campus, because many student organizations are just that, representatives of the student body, whereas the Campus Lions Clubs gives the students an opportunity to interact and serve and develop leadership skills with um, other professionals, again, the faculty and staff or other community leaders. And so that's, that, I think, is, is really a tremendous opportunity for the students who become Lions members. Champions Lions Clubs uh, help empower and build an accepting community for people with intellectual disabilities. Uh, the Champions Lions Clubs focus on projects that serve the Special Olympics athletes. There's also Lions Quest Lions Clubs to help children grow into solid citizens and by focusing on helping to integrate and incorporate the Lions Quest curriculum in the schools. There are many opportunities for specialty Lions Clubs to revolve around um, hobbies or interests, things like bicycling or garden, gardening, motorcycle riding, um, crafts, music, sports, you name it. Um, really, you know, anytime that we can get people with similar interests that are turning their hobbies into rewarding service projects that can benefit the communities, they make great prospective members for a special interest Lions Club. Similarly, uh, specialty Lions Clubs for professionals might include um, medical professions, the doctors, nurses, uh, dentists, physical therapists, uh, police, firefighters, emergency responders, um, teachers, business owners, affiliation with the Chamber of Commerce, lawyers, uh, similar to like a business networking group, lots of different professional opportunities and this is an, an opportunity to emphasize you know, resume and skill building along with the networking opportunities for being a part of this type of, of special interest Lions Club. A, another type ha is associated with specialty ethnic Lions Clubs that might center around members of either a specific ethnicity or an ethnic neighborhood. And they might focus or target 
activities and projects that, that are associated with cultural museums or cultural centers, different ethnic alliance organizations, um, and, and or um, other businesses in the community. So I'd like to, to just take a moment, we're getting close to the, the end of our time here, but um, there's lots of opportunities that we can brainstorm for special interest, either Lions Clubs or a small pocket that's a special interest branch of your existing Lions Club. And I'd like to find out if any of you who are with us are part of either a special interest Lions Club or that you have one that's associated with like your branch that's associated with your club. Hi, Wendy. We have a uh, we have a suggestion here, or another another specialty club for funeral directors. But we also have a, a question from Lion John. Um, he asks, who controls the branch club's finances? Uh, does the parent club have oversight? So. So the, the branch club is responsible for their own finances, hence the election of their uh, president, secretary, and treasurer. However, part of the, the branch responsibilities are to provide a financial report to the parent club. So essentially the board of directors would have an element of oversight with that, but uh, they generally have their own bank accounts and would, would maintain their own, you know, what they could have independent fundraising projects and things like that. I don't see anyone listing here. Um, they are members of specialty interest Lions clubs or, or particular branch clubs. Um, Lion Leanne says there's an Indian tribal club. I'd like to see one charter in Oklahoma. Ah, oh, great idea. Yeah. I know in here in Illinois, up in the, the Chicago area, there are so many different uh, ethnic Lions clubs there um, we have, with so many different so many different clubs that are uh, the Filipino club um, um, the, the Mexican clubs um, all different types of, of ethnic clubs that are just um, very very um, successful mm -hmm. in the Chicago area and I'm sure there there are other clubs around around the U.S. and Canada that are especially clubs just like that. Certainly, there, there were a couple that are specific club names that were listed on the, the LCI website. Um, the El Paso Executive Women's Lions or Executive Women Lions Club. There's a uh, Lubbock Law Enforcement Lions Club. Uh, there's many clubs that I'm aware of that are associated with eye professionals, whether it be schools of optometry or optometrists and ophthalmologists. Uh, there's uh, a club that was recently started here in Tennessee, the Murfreesboro Downtown Barristers Lions Club, and that has uh, legal professionals in it. But I want to take a moment to, to step back and, and talk about some fun ones, too. Uh, the Fairbanks Snowmobile Fun Lions Club. And so, you know, again, there's an opportunity to bring the, thing, the, the things that we do outside of our service and still come together with people we have things in common with and have fun doing it and finding a way to serve in that regard. Uh, there's the Victoria Quilters Lions Club. And let's see, I think Lion Suzanne shared that um, that her mother's uh, members, mother's yacht club in Australia is a Lions Club. So lots of opportunities there. Uh, Lion Dawn shared some military bases have Lions Clubs and and that's certainly a, a wonderful opportunity to be able to to help contribute to not only those who serve our country but also the, the communities in which those bases are held. So kind of put your thinking cap on and see if there might be an opportunity you know, in your club or in the, a nearby area for one of these types of either new Lions Clubs or a branch of your own Lions Club. And this is, as I get to the last slide, I want to share um, this, this program that I'm really excited to learn about and, and share with you because I just recently read about the Join Together program um, that was approved by the Lions Clubs International Board of Directors Membership Development Committee at the fall 2014 board meeting. And so, you know, 
as many of you are aware, LCI and Lions Clubs International Foundation have had a lot of success partnering with other organizations in the past. And now this is an opportunity to welcome other community-minded men and women to, to have some fun and impact charitable and humanitarian needs in our communities by being able to offer existing community-based nonprofits the opportunity to charter Lions Clubs or form a club branch. And so this, this is a pilot program that, that LCI is going to see how it goes for two years through September of 2016. And the, the clubs right now that are, or the, uh, the countries where this pilot program is, is being initiated are the United States, Canada, the British Isles and Ireland, Sweden, and Australia. And really the, the limit for nonprofits to associate with is that they have to have been in existence for over three years. So a couple of the, the unique aspects of the Join Together program is that they've um, significantly modified the normal requirements for being a Lions Club. Um, first of all, the, the charter fees of, of $30 per person for a new club are waived. Um, new clubs would instead pay a one-time flat fee of $300, and only 15 members are needed to charter a new club, whereas the, the standard for our um, usual club charterings is a minimum of 20 members. And then if, if the Join Together program is to be a branch of an existing club, then the entrance fee for a, per person for the club branch are waived. So I really think there are, there are a lot of benefits to existing nonprofit um, organizations in our communities being a part of a joined together Lions Club or a club branch um, of an existing club. Uh, it gives those members an opportunity to broaden their impact and meet the, the, the social needs and mission of their nonprofit while also expanding and how they can give back to the community. Um, all about meeting more lions and making new friends and so have an opportunity to, to expand their network and also add skills such as public speaking and leadership and, and some of those things that our infrastructure can make available particularly for some of the kind of smaller um, grassroots community nonprofits. It's also a part or an opportunity for these organizations to be part of our network of Lions Clubs you know, in the whole region that kind of work together to, to support one another. And other practical benefits that they receive as a result of being members such as our liability insurance and, and some of the other administrative things that, that, that help us function as Lions Clubs. And so um, I did pro there are links to the resources LCI have recently added. I haven't seen like broad announcements about this program yet. Uh, again, I just read it in the fine print of the LCI Board of Directors actions and then when I searched the, the website found that the material is, is becoming available. Um, so if you think this might be something that's of interest to you, um, or to, to other members in your club, I can think of a lot of nonprofits that the members of my club are also affiliated with in my community that we might now have a, a stronger way to, to broaden that partnership. And so I'm excited to, to kind of learn more and figure out how we can make this work. Um, so there, there are many opportunities for ways that our community-based nonprofits can benefit from this arrangement. Um, we might not think about youth sports associations but you get a few people that are interested in, in coaching and, and refereeing, um, you know, little league baseball or soccer and things like that. You know, those are nonprofit organizations, uh, parent teacher groups, some heritage or historic and cultural alliances, different environmental groups and things like that. Um, so I think that's an area that again we will be seeing more about but I would encourage you to um, either go to the link on the course page that will point you to the supplementary resources um, about the Join Together program or you can go to LCI and, and use the search box and find some additional information out about it. So uh, really excited to see where that goes and how that helps us expand the service that we provide in our communities. And so let's see as we wrap up 
as a reminder, these were our objectives for the course, and looks like we've we've covered everything. One of the, the key messages that I'd like to leave you with is, is that while there are some basic requirements for our Lions Club structure, we also have a lot of flexibility in our meeting frequency and format and committee structure, the projects we undertake, and you know, the use of club branches and maybe emphasis on these special interest areas. And so how can we, we use these things to help you know, re-energize or keep our membership energized about the service that we're providing? And I do hope you think about how you might be able to utilize the, the Join Together pilot program to, to grow your club and help meet additional humanitarian needs in your community. Um, Lion Bud, do we have any questions or comments that we need to tackle before we wrap up? No, the only <clears throat> excuse me. The only thing I saw that that came up was um, there was a question on where some of the military clubs might be found, and uh, we've been kind of chatting back and forth in the in the questions pane during your um, uh, review of the objectives, and um, it's come up where there's one in uh, Fort Lewis, McCord, in Tacoma, Washington, and, and Lion Mike said Travis Air Force Base in California has expressed an interest. And uh, Lion Dawn said there's one in Virginia. She wasn't specific, but um, I think Lion Mike had some questions on um, possibly how how they could become uh, get interest in a, an alliance club on a military base. And there's a one last question here from Lion Jim: Do branch members pay the same dues? Uh, branch members have some flexibility in dues. They do still pay the district and LCI dues, but between the club branch and the parent club, they can ap approve a, I guess, a unique or a special dues rate for the club branch. Um, however, as, as members of, of LCI, you know, they would still need to pay your district, multiple district, and LCI dues. And so they may have a, a different portion of the dues amount that's attributed to the club, and that would be for the, the branch operations. Mm -hmm. So it does not need to be the same as the other club members, but that's something that is is approved by the branch membership kind of in conjunction with, with recognizing you still need to pay district, multiple district, and LCI dues. That's all I can see on the question pane, and uh, I don't see any other hands raised, so Looks like we're pretty well covered, Wendy. All right. Well, this is the the comment about the the military um, bases and, and Lions Club is a good opportunity for me to remind folks that we have discussion boards, and this is a great way to continue the conversation on the topic. So I'm going to start a couple of of discussion topics associated with some of these specialty. Uh, Lions clubs and in particular the the military ones and so if you are familiar with either existing ones and you can help point links to to them and and and, and help Lions like Lion Mike who who is interested in learning more and pointing people in, in that direction then um, please you know, help us be a resource to one another and we'll use the, the discussion board for that you can go to lionsforum.org and just click the link to discussion boards our next webinar will be held next Tuesday, April 21st. We will be at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and the topic will be Ethics. That is a master's program elective, and you can register for the webinar from either the calendar page of Lions University or our individual course page. Don't forget to log in to lionsuniversity.org and take the course quiz to receive your credit, credit excuse me, and also please help us out by not leaving this webinar window open for a long time. Uh, to leave the webinar, you can select File on your control panel and scroll down to select Exit Webinar. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Pastor National Director Bud for his help this evening and um, thank you all for participating and please do check out the discussion forum where we hope to continue the conversation. Thanks so much. <laughs>